Thanks for listening to this Word in Your Ear podcast. If you'd like to get early access to all our productions ad-free, priority booking for our live events, and to take part in our weekly quiz, go to patreon.com slash wordinyourear for more details. Word down your way. You're such a lovely audience. Now, on my way down the escalator in the London Underground yesterday, I, I passed a slightly, frankly, disturbing poster featuring a <laughs> familiar face wearing a, a woolly hat and a fisherman's waterproof with uh, puzzled-looking seagulls perched on either shoulder. <laughs> is of course, advertising the fact that Richard Thompson has a new album called uh, Ship to Shore coming out uh, and he's headed back to the UK for a tour which begins on May the 25th in Cambridge, finishes on June the 8th with, sh- with a show at the Albert Hall. And so yeah. we're delighted to say we're joined by Richard Thompson here from his home in New Jersey. How are you doing, Richard? I'm doing very well, thank you. Nice, nice to see you, nice to talk to you. Nice to uh, see that, you. And you were just mentioning the eclipse. This is exciting because we're recording this on the day that the eclipse is about to happen in a few hours' time for you isn't it, on the East Coast. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm looking for a suitable high point to... Um, to uh, observe, um, which, uh, you know, should be put, the, the skies are clear, I'm glad to say, so uh, we should be in luck. I, 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 I saw an eclipse, I think, when I was a kid right. uh, in London, so uh, it's been a while. Yes. Well, they're not supposed to be too often, are they? Really? No, they're <laughs> well, very not. boring if they're every, every <laughs> yeah. hour and a half. <laughs> so know, you've, actually, you've actually begun this tour, that you, you started playing in the United States. Well, this is a kind of a, a sort of a, a, a quasi uh, experience. Um, th- this is solo dates around uh, the northeast of the United States, basically stuff that's drivable for, 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 from where I'm, I'm based here. Uh, and this is solo. So the, the band stuff starts rolling in the UK. Uh, oh, I we, see. So you're on your own at the moment, but it, yeah, it'll be the band, uh, yeah. As you mentioned, uh, you know, for, for, from the uh, extraordinarily disturbing poster um, <laughs> on the underground, I, th- I think they're targeting the northern line for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, but, I saw um, in the Piccadilly and the Victoria. Don't worry. Okay, it's, that's it's, good. Okay, I, I'm glad the demographic is wider than than uh, <laughs> that, that I was hearing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, but uh, uh, yes, yeah, so that starts in in May, June, and then we're back in the US with the band in October, November. So a uh, proper tour for a proper record. Right, just on, just on proper. <laughs> yeah, we, we tend to start these things by asking people if they can remember the the, the the first the first gig they ever went to. Really, the first the first, first uh, live, live show of any first kind. Live entertainment. Actually. This could include Panto or whatever you know. Okay, first, first live show of any kind. We're, 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 uh, you know, Pantomime's in there somewhere. Um, I remember seeing Arthur Askey and Panto. Yes, yes, very good. Uh, Hearted Arthur. <laughs> yes, uh, as uh, Charlie's aunt. Uh, um, c- couldn't tell you what the date it was. Um, my parents took me to one of those sort of gala family evenings at the Albert Hall. Um, again, probably I was about five, six. I don't remember. But, you know, where they do the 1812 overture with real cannon. Uh, very good. Um, yeah, Tchaikovsky piano concerto number one. Uh, John Ogden playing piano. It's fantastic. Oh, right, yeah. You know that the, the, the um, you know the Hebrew chorus, blah blah blah. You know, uh, uh, family favorites. But but it's it's a thing. It gets you started. Um, then I saw Segovia. Probably was about ten. Um, wow. At the Festival Hall, he was seventy then. I think he played till he was ninety. Um, extraordinary experience. Um, that was pretty good. So, had you taken up the guitar at that point, or was it? Was yes, it- absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was probably the first year I was playing classical guitar. Anyway, I, I, I'd, I'd sort of. Started on the sort of shadows um, trail, the rock and roll trail, a little bit before that. Um, but but that, that was nice to have my, my sort of classical uh, side reinforced uh, by seeing somebody unbelievably uh, important in, in the in the history of, of classical guitar. Um, but uh, rock and roll wise, I think sixty three ish. I think sixty three or sixty four. Um, I went with my, with my sister's boyfriend, my big sister's boyfriend, uh, and I, I think Hugh Cornwell as well, who, who was uh, my, my schoolmate at the time. Um, and we saw Chuck Berry at the Finsbury Park Astoria oh, wow. um, on a bill with Carl Perkins. Um, I saw that tour. You saw that tour, <laughs> okay. didn't you? Yeah, so, so who else was, was on it? I, I can't remember. Because um, I, I saw two tours back to back. I saw I saw Chuck the year, a year later. Yeah. So, so he, he got out of prison in 63, and he's probably figuring that my reputation is shot in America, but Europe loves me. I'll, I'll, I'll go over there and, and earn lots of money, which he probably did. Um, 
so so so, so the, yeah yes yeah, so, so that first tour um I th- was he back by the, the was it the Moody Blues or something? No, 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 the, the, the Nashville Moody Teens. Blues, Lee, Nashville Teens, probably. Yeah, yes, no, Nashville Teens was on on that tour. Um, and and then, the uh, animal, yeah, the animals, probably. I think the animals that might have been on on the one the year later. Oh um, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I do get confused between that, those two. Um, what do you remember, of Chuck Berry? Chuck Berry, uh, the the first tour, the '64 tour, he was fantastic. Yeah, he played for like twenty minutes. Yes. Usual stuff. But he was absolutely great. You know, he still had the big blonde um, Gibson Switchmaster, which was always the, the best sound he ever got out of a guitar. Um, uh, but playing through a Gibson Atlas amp, which I, I thought was very exotic at the time. Um, sorry for the nerdy details. So um, you you did that. <laughs> did you go along with the notebook pretty much to write down the equipment? Pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he was absolutely great. You know, uh, he was um, in some ways at the, at the height of his... Uh, powers if you want to call it that or his attention span anyway um <laughs> the, the the next year it wasn't quite so good oh, oh by the way carl perkins was fantastic as well he was absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. um the you know the next year he, he, he declined slightly um i might have seen him another half dozen times during his career uh, and it got kind of sloppier and uh couldn't care less you know it went through progressive degrees um, you know, but but by the time it came to my ding a ling, it was kind of all over, you know, really <laughs> in many ways. But you did um, lots of shadows songs in the school <clears> bands and stuff. So did you see did you see the shadows at some stage? I guess you must have done. I think I did. Yeah, I, th- I think I saw, saw Cliff in the Shadows somewhere, but I can't remember where that was. And and it was um it was a later incarnation. It wasn't the original. I, I'd love to have seen the original with, with Jet Harris and, and Tony Meehan. Um, right. I just love the sound of those records still. I mean, they just sound fantastic. You know, the bass sound, the Jet Harris's bass sound, it's to die for. And it's like, you know, EMI, you know, the, the mics, you know, five feet from the bass cabinet. You know, it's, it's just, uh, but it, everything sounds great. The drums sound great. The guitar sounds great. I mean, you know. There's, the there's nothing like them, is there really, in, in, in pop music, really? There's nothing quite like the Shadows. No, there, there's nothing as good, and there's nothing as well recorded. You know, you, you, you listen to... Uh, you know, other instrumental bands of the time. Uh, and uh, apart from something like Booker T and the MGs, you know, n- nothing quite lives up to, the, to that quality. Yeah. Anyway, so so then, um, chronologically moving along, so th- I think probably 65, um, I start going to the Marquee Club. And uh, there's just a, a feast of possibilities there. I, I mean, you've got the Who on Tuesdays, uh, just the absolutely incredible. Uh, Yard Buzz on Friday. <laughs> You know, I think it starts with Eric, and then it, then it's Jeff Beck, and then it's uh, Jimmy Page. You know, fantastic stuff. Um, the the nice, I think, it was with Thursdays or some Thursdays. Keith Keith Emerson, um, uh, 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 Spencer Davis group with Stevie Winwood. He was like my age or a year older. Yeah. I, I could never figure out how he got out of school. It was fantastic. Well, Spencer Davis was his teacher, wasn't it? Oh, that's right. That's, that's, that's how he got out of school. He got out of school. Little maths lessons. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they well, both mucked uh, off. <laughs> well, no, poor kid. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's just yeah, uh, go for the T bones, um, etc. Um, so yeah, and this is when I think you wrote about this in your in your autobiography. That your parents were living in Whetstone, but they were somewhere like that. Yeah, you, well, it was, you used to Stone, walk yeah. home pretty much, didn't you? Well, you had two choices. Yeah, you could stay for one set and, and get the last bus or the last train. Um, the temptation was always to to, to see both sets. Uh, knowing I'd have to walk home, which was ten miles. Um, <laughs> God, I, I, on, a, on a school night, you know, sometimes so that was a, a bit silly. You know, so <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be up at seven for school, get, get, getting in at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Um, my, my, my grades were slipping, shall we say? Yeah. So, when was the first time you were on stage? Can you remember that? <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes, that was. Um, <laughs> I'm haunted by that uh, that memory. Uh, so that was uh, St Aloysius School. Up in Highgate, oh, uh, you, can, you see the green dome. Uh, yes, uh, yes, the yes, 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 yeah. And the school, the school was just uh, along from from the church there, and uh, it's a school dance. Um, at that point, you know, I've been playing with, with with these other St Aloysius kids. Uh, you know, one of them was my neighbour, and um, from being a kind of a shadowsy sort of um, imitation band, sort of, uh, you know, our, our four piece. You know, suddenly we thought, well. Oh my God! The Beatles have come along. Oh, we, we need some singers, so, so we recruited kind of three singers from St. Aloysius School. So we're kind of an unwieldy seven-piece 
for some reason. And uh, we're opening uh, at St. Aloysius School Dance. And, um, you, you know, the, the old pennies, like the big pennies. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if, if one of those hit you, it actually hurt. <laughs> 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 and uh, we, we, we were pelted, you know, as the opening act. I, I think we, we, we were under-amplified. Uh, we were basically rubbish. Uh, and... Um, <laughs> the uh the, the rhythm guitar player my, my friend malcolm um uh, had a like a red guitar uh with, with a white fingerboard and, and and i looked over at one point and the, the whole guitar had turned red and i thought well what's going on the, the, i thought he had a white pick guard and it was it was blood like a, a, a penny had hit him on the hand and he was he was still smiling bravely and having a great time <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> in spite of the fact what that what were you that, playing what so what songs do you play we were doing, a, you know, like twist and shout. Twist we were just on Beatles yeah. covers and stuff. You yeah, know, it, yeah. was, it, was, it was it was very poor, very poor. But um, you know, we, we were pelted. Uh, not the last time I, I was uh, pelted on stage. Um, I did a gig somewhere, probably about a year after that, and uh, I, I never throwing chairs <laughs> at the stage, which is. Uh, you, you, you can't why? play through that. Why? Why? What? What had you done that? It they, sort of well, they didn't like something. They didn't like the repertoire or something. You know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so well, when that happens, you really have to get off stage. You you can't just brave it out. You know. Right. And uh, you know, occasional fights in the audience. Um, you know, that, that's another hazard sometimes. So, what have you learned? Is there anything you've learned about crowd control in in, in a long career as a professional musician? About things that well, work in terms of communicating with a difficult crowd? Or yeah, um, well, I've, I've been lucky for most of my so-called career um, in that the audience is largely on my side. Uh, when you do an opening spot, though, for somebody else, uh, you know, your, your manager or your agent will say. Uh, to further your career, we have to reach a new audience. And so, and so um, why don't you open for so-and-so? You know, why don't you open for, you know, White Snake or, or, or um, you, know, um, <laughs> you know, you know, something totally inappropriate. Um, or even um, a, a, a sympathetic audience. Like I, I did a lot of opening slots for Bonnie Wright, did a lot for Crowded House. Um, but they'll still ignore you and, and they'll still be walking in when you go on. You know, it's the lot of the opening act. So um, I decided that I just attack the audience in those situations. Um, and I thought, well, you know, who are the loudest people I know? Well, I thought there's Pat Donaldson, you know, the bass player. Um, you, you know, Pat's famous for, you know, sort of taking over a restaurant, really, you know, like the top of his voice and ordering three lobsters and, you know. Uh, and there's Danny Thompson, you know, uh, another sort of loud <laughs> person in a social situation. So I thought, well, I'm going to borrow the, the, the persona of these two people. And I'm just going to shout at the audience. I'm going to berate the audience and and um, at least get their attention, even if they don't like me. And it kind of worked. It kind of worked. Um, so that was my uh, approach to being ignored. Um, but, I mean, I haven't had a lot of hostility in the last sort of 45, 50 years. Thank God. But I think I, I, I think I heard <clears throat> you saying in an interview once that, that on stage, even in front of your own people, your own, you know, audience, to put it that mm. way, you've got to be a slightly exaggerated version of yourself, haven't you? Is that, I is think that you do, you yeah. It? Or you have to be somebody else. Um, I mean, famously, you, you can go on stage and not be yourself. And, and for a lot of people, that's a great escape, you know, from, from who they are. Um, I, I think I think that, that can work pretty well. Um, but I, in some ways, I regret not being the, the, the silent, tortured genius you know the, the the kind of the Nick Drake figure, you know, who never says anything on stage, and and people just think, my God, he's so incredible. Oh, he's so oh, he's so poetic. Oh, he's so wonderful. Um, you know, people will read a lot in into your into silence. Well, yes, it, it's your lack of communication. You know, the, the, they'll think, well, this is fabulous. You know, gosh, wow. So you know, much you're... less effort would be involved, wouldn't it? You just have to sit there, just being enigmatic and silent. You know? exactly. So you mu you must have seen Nick Drake in one of his very few. Live performance. I think I saw him once or twice at the most. Yeah. Um, Did he speak well, to yeah, the yeah, audience yeah, yeah, at all? This is, sorry. Did he speak to the audience at all? I don't remember ever seeing him speak to the audience. Uh, that might have been beyond his uh, skill set. Um, <laughs> uh, he didn't really. You know, he didn't speak to a lot of people. Uh, not just an audience. I mean, you know, socially, he wasn't exactly um, the life and soul of the party. You could say. Uh, 
Um, but I, I think I'm, maybe I saw him twice. Uh, he opened for Fairport, I think, on, on those two occasions. Um, uh, Ashley kind of discovered him. Um, Ashley, the, of the course he did. Yeah, yeah. He did. At, at the Roundhouse, you know, it was like an all-night uh, charity thing, and, and Nick got up and sang, and uh, I don't know what the audience reaction was then, probably just stoned. Uh, and Ashley mm. thought, oh, this guy's got something, and he, he recommended him to, to Joe Boyd. Were the people that you ever saw on stage <laughs> who you borrowed from in terms of stagecraft if that's the word hmm. um that's a good that's a good point yeah you, you know so someone i always thought was amazing on stage was ian anderson uh, jethro tull right. um who, who just went out there and it just killed it. I, I i was i thought it was an incredible uh performer just an amazing performer and uh captain beefheart i thought was an amazing performer um uh, in, in a different way, you know, just uh, but I think it's something about just dominating the audience. Just yeah, they're, there. they're both yeah. kind of ringmaster figures, yeah. aren't they? You know? yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you, attention. Yeah, you, you, you go out and you tell the audience who's the boss, basically. Yeah. And it's hard to do. Uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of um, uh, chutzpah, you know, to, uh, to, to, to go out there and do that. I'm not sure I, I can always <laughs> carry that one off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so the, this tour... Um, it, 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 on the poster that I was referring to earlier, I think mm. it says "very special guests." I think are, are you in a position to tell us anything about the very special guests, or, or the shape of the show, or what it's going to be? Um, the very special guests are going to be uh, at the Albert Hall. I think at the right, other shows, okay. it's going to be more my usual band and the usual. Goings on with that. Um, at the Albert Hall, we do have very special guests. I, I have to get clearance before I can name them. You know, no, okay. I have to know that uh, you know that they're not doing other shows in the area, that, so they can't be announced. Uh, all that kind of stuff, you know. Right. So, so it's, it's, it's kind of legal stuff. Um, uh, What's the breadth of so what just no. Are you playing <laughs> stuff from very very early on? Um, well, I, you know, I try to do a mixture. I know there are fans out there who have. Uh, have stuck with me for better, for worse, frequently for worse, uh, for the last, you know, 50 years, um, 50 years plus now. Um, and they deserve something. You know, they de deserve to hear something from Fairport, maybe something off, off of Henry the Human Fly, you know, from yes. 1971. Um, and then I think, well, we have people who joined in the 80s, the 90s, you know, they deserve something as well. So I really try to uh, grab something from each era, each decade, and uh, and play some new stuff. I mean, I mean, what I'd like to do is just say, "Here's the new album. We're going to play that." And thank you and good night. But uh, there has to be a balance in there. So um, I'll David just hope. And I, David and I frequently mention Henry the Human Fly because of its sleeve note. How did it start again, David? Is it bugger said God? Bugger said raining. God is raining again. <laughs> Yeah, um, poetry, <laughs> fabulous. Well, you know, a bit more like pottery than poetry. But there you go. That's, that's <laughs> I read it. I read it regularly, Richard. Yeah. All these years later, I read it. It still makes me smile. Well, that says a lot about you, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and when I saw the poster of you on the tube, you know, in, in your fisherman's gear, I thought, well, this is a man who started his solo career dressed as a fly on the cover. <laughs> so it's not well, think, surprising at all, is it, really? I think it's progress from a, from a fly to a fisherman. <laughs> I, I think I'm doing quite well. You know, I might, you know, next album I might be dressed as an accountant or something, and you know, I saw something <laughs> that actually makes money. <laughs> I, I'm looking at your fuller itinerary for um, later in the year. You're doing mm. a songwriting and guitar camp, and that's in yeah. the United States. Have you done this before, presumably? Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we're up to year 12 now. Um, oh, right. And, uh, you know, it involves my family, which is great. Uh, my grandson and, and, and uh, two, two, of my, two of my boys, uh, Teddy and, and Jack, and my, my grandson, Zach. Uh, uh, kind of the four of us now run the camp. It's up in the Catskill Mountains in, in one of those old uh, bush belt um, Have we resorts. Right? <laughs> yes. But it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful spot. It's, the weather's great. It's just a lovely place, you know. And, and um we regularly sell out, um, so it's 100 plus people. Um, we get great teachers like Sean Colvin sometimes, um, uh, we get guitarist players um, like uh, Martin Simpson, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, just, um, uh, and, and the people who come are, are formed a kind of community, you know, that like uh, attendees past and present um, are, are online now with each other. 200 people who, who regularly 
communicate and, and keep in touch. And uh, it's, it's a great experience. It's a great experience for me. You know, I, I can I can waffle on about music in one form or another. Is uh, songwriting I, 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 involved then? Is it, it's not yeah, it, it's, it's a guitar. You encourage people to write songs. It's a guitar and songwriting camp, so, so people can come for one or the other or both. And they usually come for both. Um, What's your advice uh, for people who are trying to write songs when you start? Um, well, I usually say, you know, it's, it's a crowded field, you know, so don't, don't bother. <laughs> that would be my, my first advice. Um, but if you insist, um, uh, uh, you know, here's, here's some, some choices, you know. And I don't think you say, um, well, you know, you, you need this rhyme scheme, you know, you, you need to do this. You know, it's not that specific, I think, most of the time. Um, a lot of the songwriting teachers we have uh, would generally talk about their own work uh, and, and demonstrate in that way um, uh, how they go about their process. Uh, and I try to teach my process. And also, I, I think, um, to teach more, more of a philosophy than an actual um, technique, uh, because there are many ways to, to write songs, there's many ways to write poetry, write a novel, you know, paint a picture. Um, so I, I think you teach a, a kind of an approach, a kind of a philosophy, an overview. Um, and that's about the best you can do, really. And the other nice thing about the camp is um, you're probably going to learn as much from your fellow attendees. Yes, I'm sure. You know, as you, as you are from, from, the, from the teachers. So yeah. um, it's a great experience, and, and uh, I hope we can keep it rolling as long as possible. It's, Good. Uh, it's fun. Yeah. The the other thing on your on your schedule is is you're, you're on the jewels of the Adriatic cruise later <laughs> in the year. Yeah. Have you done that before? Is that a new thing? No, that, that's a new thing. I, I've, I've done um, I've done cruises, you know, in, in the Caribbean. Uh, I think of Kayama, which is a great guy, like a singer songwriter cruise. Oh, right. That's like, that's like three thousand people. That's a lot of people. Uh, I've, I've done river cruises down the Rhine and the Danube, which is uh, which is one of my favourite things to do. Uh, where you've got like one hundred and twenty people, uh, but that's a beautiful experience. But this is the first time uh, that we've done this Adriatic cruise. Uh, that's out of Venice. Um, it's the biggest um, sailing ship in the world. I think. I think I'm right in saying. You know, it's, it's like it's like a it's like a five masted. Uh, oh, really? ship, this massive sailing oh, ship. Um, oh my so goodness! It's, not a liner, I, 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 it's a real old school schooner. It, 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 it's old school, and and um, you know, I I, I I don't have names for for the number the sails. You know, like when you get up to six <laughs> uh, right. square square rig sails, I, I'm not not sure what the names are. It's like beyond the moonraker. You know, it's beyond top gallant. God knows what you call them. Anyway, um, and that's going to be with Fairport. Uh, that, that so it's me and Fairport, and it's going to be. Great, it's going to be fantastic, and it kind of hops around the Adriatic, which at that time of year um, should be fairly calm. Um, we just go to former Yugoslavia, really, but basically to Croatia, to um, 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 it's playing in rough sea with Albania. <laughs> Have you ever uh, played rough, in rough sea? Um, Roughish, you know. Uh, the, I mentioned the Kiamo cruise and and the, the theatre there, the big theatre, uh, is right at the front of the boat, and. Um, so y y you can get a bit of sway, you know. Um, even in a fairly calm sea, it'll move around a little bit. And uh, the, they've now secured the PA columns a bit better, but the PA columns used to kind of roll from side to side. <laughs> and um, if, if I, had the, I had the band on that boat and, and I was playing electric, um, it, it was hazardous to, to try and step on a pedal. <laughs> because your your foot would raise, uh, and uh, you know, with the, the the intention of hitting the fuzz pedal, and you'd hit the tremolo pedal. But you know, you just like miss miss completely. <laughs> but by, by the time your foot came down, the ship had moved. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, yeah. But um, all these things are great fun. Great fun. Well, look, Richard, very nice to talk to you. You're looking forward Likewise. to the tour. You're looking forward to the talk. Looking forward to being back in the UK. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, of the things I do, that that's my favourite thing to do is, is to just get up in front of an audience and, and play music and, and feel that uh, you're getting something across to people. You know, that you're sharing, you're sharing music. It's lovely. Word down your way. You're such a lovely audience. <laughs>